Hey, what's happening, Roland? Well, hey, today's Friday. In fact, it's uh, it's February the 9th. It's the second week of, uh, of February. It's been a cold front, and there was some interesting fishing. We we caught some good fish yesterday, and even some good fish today. And I'll tell you about it. What What's going on right now? I'm fishing the Headwaters Lake, and uh, today I have fished with two boys from Savannah. And uh, Tim and, and Ryan, uh, they were just great guys, and, and we caught uh, seven, well, in fact, Ryan caught a seven-pound bass, and uh, Tim caught a couple fives, and it wasn't too bad. We had like 10 bass over four pounds. Well, now, that was a shiner deal. Now, <laughs> let's back up. Let's talk about the first part of the week. You know, this is an update for the week. This is the uh, what's happening, Roland, what's happening for the week. Well, last Saturday... In fact, I, I talked to you Friday about Scott doing so well in the tournament. He was leading the tournament down at Lake Okeechobee. Well, Saturday, he won the tournament. Hey, my son Scott, he set a record, 91 pounds of bass in just a, a three-day tournament. That's over a 30-pound average. Now, Lake Okeechobee was really alive and well. Now, you know, Scott, let me just tell you, back it up a second. He's an expert at forward facing sonar and what scott does is something that you and i can't do i can't do it i fish with scott a lot and scott says uh dad uh in fact he said you know you should you should have come down and fished this lake okeechobee tournament because they were exactly in the same spot they were last may when i i had that big 10 pound bass and a couple eight pound bass on frogs that was a big deal well that's where they were but here's the problem there were 60 boats in there. I said, well, Scott, what about the other boats? He said, there's 60 boats fishing around me. I said, 60 boats, how are you going to do it? He said, that, they don't bother me. They don't bother me. I said, well, why? Why don't they bother me? He said, because my technique is completely different. How I win this tournament is I'm using that forward-facing sonar and I identify the different fish out there. Now, here's the problem. You look at fish and you can see a garfish and you can see a sunfish and you can see a bass. But 90% of the fish that Scott's seeing right now are tilapia. Now, tilapia are 5, 6, 8, 10 pounds. Bass are 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 pounds. How do you tell the difference? Scott can tell the difference. Now, you and I, I can't. There's not two people in the whole world can tell the difference between a 6-pound tilapia and a 6-pound bass. But Scott can. He can say that, and he'll, he'll, he's right. He can tell from the way they move, by the way, they, the signature of them. I don't know. I don't know how he does it. I just can't know. I just, but I know this, the last day of the tournament, Saturday, last Saturday, he only had one fish at 11 o'clock. He saw a great big giant bass, a really trophy winner, one that would win the tournament for him. And sitting on a bed or sitting somewhere out there, and he just kind of stationary in a certain spot. He fished for it for an hour, a couple hundred casts, but he caught it. He caught it. It was almost nine. I think it was nine pounds. But anyway, the point was, I don't think I could have done that. I mean, I can't do that. I can't sit there for an hour throwing at some fish. That I don't even know what it is. And so <laughs> it's, it's a pretty difficult situation. It, it's, it's a lot harder than you might realize. But anyway, Scott is, uh, is, is, is really well. He's, he's going to fish the Elite again this year. He's uh, right now, uh, I'm not sure how the classic standings are, but he was, uh, anyway, he's, he, he's just having a great year. And that was a record. 91 pounds was all-time record for the, uh, for the BASS Invitational Circuit. Now, there's a couple different circuits. There's the Elite Circuit, and there's the, the Vast Master Classics deal, and all, there's all different kind of tournaments. But for the Invitationals, which are the most prevalent tournament, that's the biggest deal. It's the record. That's the record, record deal, particularly for the, for the Lake Okeechobee uh, deal. But anyway, okay, let's go back. Let's go back a couple of days later. Sunday. This happened Sunday. Let me tell you what happened Sunday. There were so many boats at headwaters, and I, 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 I was, uh, there were like 150 boats at headwaters. So I said, I can't, I can't deal with the crowd. This is the first week of February, and everybody's packing down here in Florida. They've heard about headwaters. So I'm going to go to Three Forks. Now, Three Forks is an airboat lake. You really can't take a regular bass boat in the Three Forks. But I can take this boat in there. And the reason why I can take this boat is I have a jack plate. I have a bob jack plate in the back. I can raise it way up and get the motor way up high. 
It's a 150. It doesn't heat up, and then I have to go through a bunch of uh, shallow water, a bunch of muck, a bunch of uh, hydrilla and hy hyacinths, the thick hyacinths. In fact, I had a couple of bass boats go with me, and they just constantly heated up. I never heat. I never heated up one time. I got all the way down six or eight miles down to the south end where it's so good, and I got there in this in this boat here. It's a aluminum boat, but you can't hardly do it in a bass boat. It's just not almost possible. It's an airboat lake. And so I have airboat, but I didn't have the airboat. But anyway, I went in there Sunday. It was so cool. This guy I had, <clears throat> yeah, Jamil, and his and his and his wife, they had never caught bass over six pounds. He had Jamil had, and she had never caught one over five. And I got that done because he caught a seven and three quarters on a chatterbait. I don't know how much chatterbait's out right now, but the chatterbait pattern was really good at, 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 at three forks. Along with, we, we did catch a couple of shiners, but the other thing was we were taking worms, regular Cinco worms or Cinco type of worms. We were casting them into the uh, uh, heavy cover, say, along the edge of the hyacinths, along the edge of the lily pads, and they're kind of spawning in there. Uh, it's a kind of a spawn going on. Water temperature right now is about 65 degrees, and that's pretty warm in that lake. And sure enough, but here's the thing, here's the thing about the three forks versus headwaters. There were 130 boats that Sunday in headwaters. 130. We got to the launch ramp at Three Forks. There were five boats. Five boats fishing. The whole big lake is as big as as big as can be, and no pressure, no, no boats. You know, and, and that's why you can catch a trophy bass in a lake that's not being fished hard. Now. Catching trophy bass in, in, in headwaters, you can. Yes, I caught a trophy bass yesterday. I caught a, a trophy bass back today. I caught a, a trophy bass last week. I caught plenty of trophy bass in headwaters, but there's a lot of boats, 130 boats today. Tomorrow, I'm going to say there's going to be 200 boats. It's going to be a Saturday. There's going to be 200 boats. It's a little bit, a little bit over. Five. This is the busiest week of the entire year, this week, right now. And so that's why I'm probably going to go to Three Forks. But Anyway, it's, it's really working out good. Now, what happened, the cold front hit Monday and Tuesday, and it really got windy. In fact, I had to cancel my guide trip parties uh, a Tuesday because it blew, it blew 30 miles an hour. You can't, I don't care what you do, you, 30 miles an hour, you can't fish at 30 miles an hour. When you come down to Florida, you need to study these cold fronts. When you hit these giant cold fronts where the water temperature drops 5 and 10 degrees like it did this, last, this week, and it blows 30 miles an hour. It, that's not fishing. You can't. You can't really do much on a day like like Tuesday. And Wednesday wasn't much better. Anyway, Thursday came along. We caught a few fish. Actually, Thursday was a great day. Thir Let me tell you about Thursday. I get this guy uh, Thursday. It was yesterday, and we got in. In I went to some of the deeper pits, and I took a little spinner rod with 20 pound test. Uh, uh, actually, a uh, 20 pound test braid, a little small hook, three out hook, sm fairly small shiners, and threw them out in 10, 15 foot of water. I let them sit out there. Bam, the guy catches an eight and three quarters. He catches a seven, and he catches two sixes and a couple of fives. It was just a fantastic day yesterday. And we did about the same thing today, except we didn't get into the schools of fish. We did have a seven, we had a couple five and a halves and a couple of fives. We had 10 bass over. Say 10 bass over four pounds. So today wasn't a bad day, but it just wasn't as good as yesterday. Anyway, that's the kind of thing that's happening in, in my world. I'm, I'm fishing uh, uh, every day. It's, uh, oh, I want to apologize. I'm going to be probably a little late with this video, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I didn't have sound. I did another one just like this out on the lake, and I, we were catching fish, and I was, I was talking to uh, Ryan and Tim, and, and they were catching fish, and we were having a big interview there from Savannah, Georgia. And no sound. I didn't get sound, so now I'm doing a second one. This is my second video that I'm doing for the day on what happened and what's happening in Roland. And I just wanted to tell you that, uh, you know, I have to do these things all the time. I, I did a little story the other day. It was funny. And I went viral. And I got 30,000 views just in no time. And that was because I was just talking about tournament experiences. I was talking about just little things that happened, little anecdotes that I, that I had uh, over the years, little little experiences I've had. See, I wrote a book, 101 Bass Catching Secrets, and that was a really successful book. 
And uh, the Winchester Press said, well, you know, you get the second most successful book of all time that we've published. I said, well, what's the first most successful? He said, a book on bird watching. So I guess there's more bird watchers than bass fishermen. I don't know. But anyway, telling little stories is kind of what I do. And that was a real big deal just, just the other day because I told a story about how I love the Everglades and how I love airboating the Everglades. Anyway, it just became a viral deal and it was really cool. So anyway, folks, that's what's happening in my world. Hey, listen, I'm giving you these updates. I'm talking about the good fishing here on the, in, the, in the central Florida. Hey, hit that like button. O'Reilly's, all, all, the, all the people at Frog Talks, my Bass Pro Shop people, they all just love you to hit the likes and they love you to subscribe. And I thank you very much for supporting my channel and supporting me. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you.